Holy Gospel according to John. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Immediately, the man became well, took up his mat, and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away, since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
John tells us a story about Jesus encountering an invalid man next to a pool that was known to heal people. But let's just think about that for a second. A healing pool, and yet so many sick people surround it, kind of makes us think, is it really working? And among all those sick people, Jesus sees and approaches this one man who has been there for 38 years. And he asks him, do you want to be healed? And we, we think, of course, Jesus, of course he wants to be healed. Isn't that why he's there? Isn't that what he's been waiting for for 38 years? But the man, that's not really how he responds now, does he? He doesn't really say, yes, Jesus, yes, I want to be healed. Instead, like a man whose hope has been failing, he says, Sir, I have no one. I have no one to put me into the water when it gets stirred up. And when I do get up, when I do try, somebody already goes ahead before me. To that man, his hope for healing, his only hope for healing was that pool. And it wasn't working for him. He couldn't make it to the water in his own power and in his own ability. He couldn't heal himself. But to that, Jesus says, get up, take up your mat, and walk. And at that instant, at that moment, the man is healed. After all those 38 years of waiting and of being sick, in just one second, in the presence of Jesus, that man gets healed. You see, that man has been putting his hope on the wrong thing, which we are often guilty of, you know? Sometimes we put our hopes on things and on circumstances. Maybe if I get 10 times more productive today, maybe things will get better. Maybe if I look prettier or I have a better personality, then maybe I won't feel so lonely today. Or maybe, Maybe if I could only get 100 likes on Instagram or on Facebook, then maybe I would feel more love. And for the man in our story today, it was the healing pool. And just like any false hopes, it wasn't working for him. But when the man felt like all hope was gone, hope found him. When he couldn't get to the water himself, the living water came to him. And it was revealed to him at that moment that real hope, that our real hope can only be found in the person of Jesus. So as we continue to reflect on God's word today, I invite you to ask this question to yourself. Where do I truly place my hope in? And through this story today, Jesus is inviting us to place our hope in Him and in Him alone because He's the only person, He's the only hope that is trustworthy. He's the only hope that can never disappoint. The only hope that will always come through for us and come showing up for us. So together, let's pray in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Jesus, we come before you today. We open our hearts to you. We are sorry for the times when we put our hope in other things that are apart from you. But today, Jesus, we choose you again. We choose to put our hope in you again because you are the hope that is trustworthy. You are the hope that we know will always show up for us. So we choose you. We love you. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.